Mona Lisa Leonardo da Vinci's greatest work The woman with a mysterious smile Who could she have been? Why did da Vinci agree to paint her? And what do we see in the painting? The painter and historian Giorgio Vasari reported that Leonardo undertook to paint for Francesco del Giocondo the portrait of his wife, Lisa del Giocondo. Lisa was a member of a distinguished family, the Gerardini, and born in 1479. At the age of 15, she married Francesco del Giocondo, a member of the wealthy Giocondo family who traded in silk. Francesco had a two-year-old son from his first wife who had lost her eight months earlier. Lisa and Francesco had two sons by 15-3. Around the same time, he commissioned Leonardo to paint his wife's portrait. But what made Leonardo accept the order? At that time, he ignored the entreaties of prominent patrons of the arts to do their portraits and was absorbed in scientific pursuits. Also, Leonardo often did not complete the orders and this created conflicts with his father, Piero da Vinci, who helped him financially. One reason may have been family friendship. His father had been Francesco del Giocondo's notary for many years and had represented him many times in legal disputes. It is more likely that Leonardo undertook to paint the Mona Lisa because he wanted to. She was an infamous woman and not some famous noble or mistress of a ruler who would have her own demands. She could paint her the way he wanted. Vasari knew Francesco and Lisa as he visited Florence repeatedly between 1527 and 1536 and befriended their children. In the first edition of his work, in 1550, the children were still alive. If he was wrong and it wasn't Lisa's relatives and friends, could point it out to him. In 1568, in the second edition of his book, he made many other corrections, but the story of the Mona Lisa did not change. In 1517, Antonio de Beatis, secretary to Cardinal Luigi of Aragon, visited Leonardo in his studio in France. In his diary, he recorded that he saw three paintings, Saint John the Baptist, the Virgin and Baby Jesus with Saint Anne, and the portrait of a Florentine lady. This shows that the portrait was not of a famous noble woman or ruler's mistress, but of a woman like Lisa del Giocondo. De Beantis, however, stated that the painting was done at the instigation of Giuliano de' Medici, but when Leonardo began painting the painting, Giuliano had not yet become Leonardo's patron and uh, by 1503 had been exiled by the Florentine political leaders and uh, was living in Urbino and Venice. Some argue that the painting depicted one of his mistresses but none of his known mistresses were Florentine lady and uh, those who were famous enough would have been recognized by the Beatis if they were the subject of the painting. One possibility that Giuliano did induce Leonardo to paint the painting was this. Giuliano and Lisa had been born in the same year, in 1479, and knew each other through their families. At the age of 15, Giuliano was forced to leave Florence and after a few months, Lisa married the elderly widower Francesco. Perhaps when Leonardo passed through Venice in 1500, Giuliano asked him to make a portrait of her or when Leonardo went to Rome with his unfinished painting, Giuliano, his patron at the time, asked him to complete it. This is not uh, so inconsistent with the story of Francesco del Giocondo commissioning the painting and perhaps offers another reason why Leonardo never delivered the painting to Francesco. The name Mona Lisa 
is an abbreviation of Madonna, Lady, Lisa, also called Gioconda. The painting is recorded under this name in the inventory of Da Vinci's protege Salai in 1525, which reinforces the theory that Mona Lisa and Gioconda are the same work. This is a pun on her name, something Leonardo generally liked to do, and means the jovial one. Also in 2005, discovered a note by Agostino Vespucci, who was a cleric and assistant to Niccolò Machiavelli, who had worked with Da Vinci, which he wrote in 1503 and mentioned that head of Lisa del Giocondo as one of the paintings Leonardo he was working on at the time. Leonardo da Vinci depicts Lisa seated in a portico, the bases of the columns are just visible at the edges of the painting, and her arms are folded, resting on her bearing arm. Leonardo devoted much of his life to the study of light, shadow and optics. In the Mona Lisa, he made the light come from above and slightly to the left. But since she is sitting in a portico, we can assume that the portico was open on her side. A question is Lisa's non-existent eyebrows, as Vasari in his description duly gilded them. Where the eyebrows should be there are two faint and blurry patches. Leonardo painted them on a layer of oil that had completely dried and then may have been erased the first time the painting was cleaned. French expert Pascal Cotet took high-definition scans using light filters and discovered tiny traces of the eyebrows that were originally there. Leonardo, from the time he was an apprentice in Verrocchio's workshop, was particularly observant with the folds of fabrics. Her hair is covered with a transparent cobweb veil which she wore as a symbol of virtue. The landscape behind Lisa is seen from above. The geological formations and misty mountains are a mixture of science and fantasy. The barren and uneven terrain, reminiscent of prehistoric times, is connected to the present by an arced bridge that spans from one side of the river to the other, just over Lisa's left shoulder. The horizon line appears to be higher and farther on the right side than on the left and the earth appears to be twisting. Leonardo embraced the analogy between the macrocosm of nature and the microcosm of the human body. The earth flows towards Lisa and joins her. The serpentine flow of the river on her right appears to join the silk scarf covering her left shoulder. On the left side of the painting, the serpentine road twists as if to connect with her heart. Her dress just below her bust billows and cascades down her torso. The smile. As we look at her, the smile appears sometimes less and sometimes more intense. At the time Leonardo was perfecting Lisa's smile, he was spending his evenings in the morgue beneath the Santa Maria Nuova Hospital, stripping skin from corpses and exposing muscles and nerves. He analyzed every possible movement of the face that determined the origin of every nerve that controlled his muscles. Leonardo had discovered that the muscle that forms the lower lip is responsible for pursuing the lips. If you pinch the lower lip, you will see that it is true. It can pinch itself, but it is impossible to pinch only the upper lip. He had discovered different muscles for lip movements. The smile includes other scientific elements. Leonardo was studying optics and found that light rays do not converge to a single point inside the eye. Instead, they impinge on the entire surface of the retina. The central area of the retina, the fovea, is better at detecting colors and small details and the area around the fovea 
is better at detecting shadows and tones of white and black. When we look at an object in front of us, it appears sharper. When we look at it peripherally, out of the corner of our eye, it appears a bit blurry. So, Leonardo created a smile that escapes us when we try hard to distinguish it. The fine lines at the corners of Lisa's mouth are subtly turned downward. If you focus on the mouth, the retina detects these small details and subtle contours, so Lisa appears not to be smiling. However, if you shift the gaze and look at the eyes, cheeks or some other part of the painting, you will see the face with peripheral vision. It will look a little blurry. You'll see the shadows and the soft smudge at the corner of the mouth make Lisa's lips turn up in a subtle smile. Thus, the smile appears more strongly the less consciously one looks for it. Leonardo da Vinci never delivered the painting or received any payment and carried it with him to Florence, Milan, Rome and France, enriching and perfecting it until his death on May 2, 1519, in Le Cliché, France.